Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our second installment here of the voiced over PowerPoints for Unit 1, The Scientific Method. Today we're going to be talking about the language of science. So primarily we're going to be talking about a few things that in science mean a little bit different than what they do in the normal everyday use. So some of the big terms we're going to be talking about today include belief, hypothesis, theory, law, in fact, as we go through, we're going to be giving you an example of each and how they work. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this thing started. So the language of science is different. Terms in science have a different meaning than they do in everyday common use. For example, you won't really throw around hypothesis and theory in everyday conversation. But, for example, a law... When you're talking about a law, you know, normally, a law is something like the speed limit put in place to go ahead and keep things in check and more or less keep you safe, you know, like um, speeding. You know, don't really, you don't really want to go speeding because uh, bad things happen when you do. Also, don't text and drive. All right, that was your PSA for today. But in science, a law means things a little bit different than you would normally think. So these differences can lead to a misunderstanding of scientific research and propositions if you don't know the correct terminology, which is our goal to go ahead and get that kind of conveyed to you today. So the first thing we're going to talk about today is a belief. So a belief primarily is an opinion that does not require evidence, often based on societal or religious teachings or ethics. So an example of this is astrology. So astrology is basically using the stars to go ahead and predict somebody's future. So just because, you know, the Big Dipper was aligned here and Pluto was over there, I'm telling you, back when I was a kid, Pluto was still a planet, so I'm going to go with it. So just because the planets are aligned this way, there's like a 75% chance that I could go ahead and become a millionaire or get rich or you know think of like a horoscope based off the stars based off of your astrological symbol it's like don't do this go do that there's nothing really to back it up a simplified example of this would be like red is the best color of all time why because it is you see there's no real scientific fact to back that up so a testable statement that predicts the effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable hmm if you watched the last video you should know what this is that's right this is a hypothesis and we know that a hypothesis is an if-then statement right they can be tested so an example of this would be if temperature is increased in an area then the number of pill bugs in that area will decrease so pill bugs I'm sure you've seen them before these are these small little roly-polies you know when you go ahead and poke them they curl up into a ball now they're not a big fan of heat so if we increase the temperature in an area the pill bugs should move away from that area see if then statement testable and based off of prior research so a scientific theory, a scientific theory, as you can see from the definition here, is a little bit complicated, but we're going to try and smooth this out the best we can. So a scientific theory is a well-substantiated explanation of the natural world. It can incorporate facts, laws, inferences, and tested hypotheses. Some of these theories are cutting edge and have less evidence to support them because they were kind of come up with uh, not too long ago. Some examples of theories in science include the theory of evolution, the atomic theory, string theory, and just like that TV show, the Big Bang Theory. So continuing here with a the theory, theories are used to explain the how and the why and predict the outcome of other experiments. So theories must be tested but cannot be 100% proven. And sometimes they are wrong, because they can't be 100% proven, and must be modified, changed, or discarded. So based off of new technology, 
new experiments that are being done, it's capable that a theory might have to be changed. So the big thing about theories here that'll kind of give away it's a theory is that if there's a lot of evidence to support this, but it can't be 100% proven. For example, let's talk about evolution for a second. So evolution, we have a wide variety of different pieces of evidence that this is how it works. For example, we got structural, looking at the skeletons between then and now. We've got genetic, looking at the base pairings inside the DNA. We've got fossil records. We've got analogous structures, homologous structures, embryology of how they grow and develop inside the womb or an egg. So we have a lot of evidence to support this, but until we get a time machine, which is a whole other can of worms entirely, we can't exactly go back and prove that that's how it works. So remember, a theory, a lot of evidence to support it, but we can't 100% prove that that's how it works. So a scientific fact is an objective observation that can be measured again and again and again with the same result. For example, the Earth is round. So, the Earth is round, and it doesn't matter how many times you try and go through this, the Earth is always going to be round. Now, same thing with, now let's take a little mathematical approach here, it's not my strongest subject, but it might be yours. So, let's think about pi. So, pi is always going to be equal to 3.1415, etc., etc., etc. Like I told you, math isn't really my strong suit, but doesn't matter how many times you go through it, pi is always going to equal that number. So, a scientific law. A law is a statement of an observed regularity among facts, often expressible as a simple mathematical relationship. So, for example, the law of gravity. A dead giveaway for a law is if you see a formula attached to it. For example, in the uh, physics, Force equals mass times acceleration. That's a law. So the law explains what, not why. So it explains what happens and not why it does. And it's the summary of the results of many, many experiments and observations. So when a series of experiments have the same results time and time and time again, they no longer need to be tested. So. Let's go ahead and go back to the theory of gravity, or Newton's law of gravity. Sorry, it was not a theory there. So, if I take this ping pong ball, all right, let's go ahead and prove that this law exists. If I take this ping pong ball, and I go ahead and drop it, what should happen? Is it going to float? Is it going to sink? Let's find out. Here we go. Bingo! See that? It drops. So that right, that right there, we just proved that gravity exists. Now, if you go ahead and do this experiment for yourself, and you try it, and, you know, it floats, you might want to go tell somebody about that, because I think you might have just chained to scientific law, which is really impressive. Alright, so this brings us to our last slide today. So, for the last slide today, we're just going to give you a little bit of a quiz to see how well you've retained some of this information. So the question is, which one is most likely to be proven wrong? Is it a hypothesis, a theory, or a law? So I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit of time here to think. So which of these is most likely to be proven false? Still need more time? All right, I'll give you a few more seconds. I'm just gonna kick back here and then enjoy my wonderful cup of coffee. Well, that's good. So, let's go ahead and start on the right and work our way to the left. So if you said law, I'm sorry, that wouldn't quite be correct. Because remember, a law can go ahead and over years and years of experimentation has been proven to have the same outcome. So that's pretty much a guarantee that that's true. 
So let's go to our second one here, a theory. Now, a theory, like we said earlier, is something that can't be 100% proven, but it does have a lot of evidence to support it. So it can be proven wrong, but you need a lot of evidence and experimentation to go ahead and back that up. So if you said hypothesis, that would be correct. Now remember, a hypothesis is an if-then statement that we haven't tested yet. So since we haven't tested it yet, there's a very good possibility it might be wrong. Well, that just about is going to close it down here for our second video. Thank you very much for joining us today, and until the next time, I will see you in the next video. You keep it classy.